coming up to Easter. And the world thinks it's about Easter bunnies and Easter eggs. But we know the reality of the cross. We know that the reality is not a bunny giving you eggs. But it's a Jesus that sent for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's what Easter is about. It's for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He loved me so much that he sent his son to die in my place. He took my place. I deserve to die on the cross, but he took my place. So what does it mean when we speak of the cross? I'm refer- not referring more than to just the two planks well of wood nailed together to form a means of execution. I'm not talking about that. We only have to look in our media today, look in our pop world today. And we have rap artists, we cross round their neck and they don't even got a clue what the cross is. It's just a piece of jewellery. I want to tell you, everybody in Hollywood, the cross is more than a piece of jewellery. There is power in the cross. I want to tell you, if you've still got Jesus on your jewellery, on your cross, the cross is empty. He's risen indeed. I may, get, I, may, I may upset a few religious people here now, but if you're walking around with a cross and Jesus is still on it, you've got a crook curse around your neck. Because cursed is him who hangeth on the tree. I don't, I ain't got, I don't wear jewellery. My wife don't like me wearing it, so I don't wear it. I've got a wedding ring on, that's it. But my cross wouldn't have him on it. If I had a cross on it, wouldn't have him on it. Why? Because cursed is him. I was in Brazil one day. This is what happened. This happened in the testimony. And a young man began to, this lady began to manifest a demon in her. And he began to choke her. And I looked at her neck and she had a crucifix on. The Lord says, rip it off. I went, boom. She was totally set free. Totally set free. See, there's power in the cross. See, I don't do religion. And I may have upset some people online. You'll get over it. But don't mail the apostle. You can mail me on Facebook. That's fine. The cross is Jesus' sacrifice of himself for which he died for the sins of humanity. You imagine that. He became sin. He became sin. He took our sin. He took our sicknesses on him. He took it on him. On us. And on the cross, he supplied everything, total provision for the humanity of man. You see, I love it. You see, at the cross, the word impossibility was nailed. At the cross, the word impossibility was nailed. You've got an impossibility, guess what? At the cross, it was nailed to it. That's why we can declare and that's why people are here. We're testifying of the miracle working God of provision, of healing, of turning around of a marriage, of restoration. Why? Because the word impossibility was nailed at the cross when he said it was finished. He paid it in full. Jesus has paid in full. I want to ask you this morning, what do you require from him? What you lack spiritually and mentally and emotionally and financially or mentally. I want to tell you why are you carrying something that Jesus has already paid for. Some of you are carrying stuff. You're carrying sickness and disease. You're carrying a poverty. You're carrying mental issues. I want to tell you why are you carrying something he's already paid in full for it. Some of us are carrying luggage. We're carrying overweight luggage. That he's already paid for. When I fly back home to the UK, I know my luggage is going to be overweight. Shall I tell you why? Because I've got some books to go back. But guess what? I'm still going to have to pay for that overweight luggage. But I want to tell you, if you're, if you're carrying things that, you, that Jesus has already paid for, guess what? You don't have to pay for the overweight. He's already paid for it. In full by his blood. In full. In full, he ain't paid in half measure. He ain't paid a 10%. He's paid in full. I 
love the testimony of the young man who's going into politics. You know, he said about how he, he served the house in tithes and offerings. I love that. See why? Because it opened the finished work of cross. When we sow and the seed, it sows. It opens the finished work of the cross to us. The work was finished, complete, consummated, irreversible. He won on the cross. At the cross, ah, it was an expression of his love. I love it that the Father loved me so much that he sent his son to die. You, I can never, ever, that passage in John 3.16 can never be a cliche for me. Too many times people can quote it and it become a cliche. But we can never get old. It is still as fresh as ever. That for God so loved that he gave. He loved us so much. That he took the stripes on his back. As they wrapped him to the post, he did it because he loved us. As they started to strip him with those whips, and as they pulled the whip back, the flesh would begin to be pulled, ripped off his back. He did it because he loved us. And as they constantly began to whip him, pools of blood would flow on the floor so that you could see his rib cage, you could see the muscles and the tendons on his back because they ripped it so hard. But he did it because he loves me. He did it because he loves you. He did it because he loves you. Why? Because he loved us so much that by his stripes, we were healed. That's why he did it. He took those stripes so that we could know healing. He took the thorns in his head when they wrapped those, that crown of thorns on his head. The thorns would have been that big. I don't know, in inches, very big. And they would have rammed it on his head. Not politely, they would have rammed it on his head. And blood flowed out of his heart and mind. Why? Because he's come to heal your mental problems. He's come to heal your mental problem. That's why he did it, because he loves us. He loves us. He who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Romans 5 eight says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It blows my mind. That whole thing. But come on. He loved me, yet why I was still a sinner. Even when I didn't know it, he loved me. That blows my mind. That yet I, even when I hated him, even when I didn't love him. And the problem is, you know, when you grow up in a Christian home and you don't want God. The problem is you have grandparents that begin to pray. You have my parents began to cry out for me. And guess what? I felt like I was on a bungee rope. I tried to run away from God. I hated church. I went because of my mom and dad, but I hated being there. I saw religion, not reality. Yet even when I was like that, he loved me. He loved me at the point of 16 years of old. At the age of 16, when I, not, I was wanted to go into the army and it didn't happen. And I was at the end of my tether, at the end of my rope. I remember sitting in my, office, in my bedroom at 16 years of age. And I said, Lord, I've had enough, I yield to you. And I can remember as clear as day that he walked in the room. He cleansed me and he filled me with the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you, this fire has never gone out. This fire will never go out. This fire will never go out. This fire will never go out. Well, this fire will never go out. Because when you encounter Him, it changes you forever. 
at the cross, Satan was defeated. And all his words, Colossians 2.15. If you want to put it up on the screen, Colossians 2.15. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. See, on the cross, Jesus dealt Satan a total, irrevocable, permanent, eternal defeat. He says, having despoiled principalities and powers, he made an open show of them triumphing over them. And in the Amplified, he puts, in the cross. He defeated the enemy. He dethroned him. He disarmed him. The Bible says in 1 Peter, the Bible says, You're, he's like a roaring lion. Doesn't it? Do you know why he's like a roaring lion? He had his teeth pulled at Calvary. You know, some of you have got voices going in your head. They're like roaring voices. You see, the only roar, the roaring lion I know, and he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. But you know, you get roars in your head of sickness and disease and poverty. And you get roars that say you're never going to achieve anything. You're not going to do anything. There's roars that come, you're going to be a failure. You're going to be limited. You're going to be this. You're going to be what your culture says you're going to be. Your dad's had cancer, you're going to die of cancer. because you No, there's a roar. And guess what? I want to tell you tonight that God is turning the Word of God on. The light of the Word. The Bible says the entrance of the Word brings light. And one day God spoke to me about it. I said, what do you mean by that, Lord? He said this. He says, when you, turn, when you hear the roar and you turn the light of the Word of God on, all you see is a mouse with a microphone. See that roar you're hearing? It's just a mouse with a microphone. Why? Because Jesus said the devil was defeated at the cross. The only authority he gets, two, two places he gets authority, is when we're disobedient and when we listen to his lie. Because when we listen to his lie, we empower him to rob us. It's not only when we're obedient, it's when we listen to the lie that he empowers us into our life. That's why Jesus, the, the devil, the enemy doesn't want us to preach on the cross because when we preach on the cross, it reminds him that he's defeated. It reminds him that he has been dethroned. It reminds him that he has been he is destroyed. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. I, I just thank God that Jesus said, didn't he? As, I sent, as the Father has sent me, I send you. We're called to destroy the works of the devil. Your per- yeah, you see, I, I want to get some t-shirts made. And it's going to go, I'm Satan's personal nightmare. Because when I get out of bed, when I get out of bed, he goes, uh-oh. When the evangelistic team gets ready to go out on the Monday, he's going, uh-oh. Because he's going, uh-oh, my time's up, my time's up. I need to get out of Miami quick because they're coming for me. They're coming for me. They're coming for me. They remind me I'm defeated. When you win souls, you remind him he's defeated. When we heal the sick, we remind him he's defeated. When we cast out devils, we remind him he's defeated. Hallelujah. Every religious devil, I've read the end of the book, we win. Boom. I'm not a victim, I'm a victor. Because he who is in me is greater than he that's in this world. Why? Because I have a revelation of the cross. Some of you need to get a revelation of the cross. You need to get the Holy Spirit to uncover you. The power of the cross. Because some of you know about it, but you don't have a revelation on it. Because when you get a revelation of it, it moves you. When you get a revelation of you, it transforms your life. I didn't, I didn't read the theoretics of the cross. I haven't read a theological book on the cross. I got a revelation of what Jesus did at the cross. And when you get that, it transforms you. But not only will it transform you, it will transform your community. See, transform people, transform community. When we're transformed, we can't help but transform people. This At the cross, we constantly remind him he's defeated. 
where we sing the cross, songs about the cross, we remind him he's defeated. At the cross, Jesus overcame death and the hell. Revelation 1.18 says, I am he who lives and was dead, but I'm, behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys. I have the keys. I mean, how stupid can the enemy be? They thought they got him on the cross. You know, you can imagine the hordes of hell going, we've got him. We've got him. We've won him. We've won him. They didn't realize. They're dancing around his body. We've got him. We've won him. You're not the Messiah. You're not the soon and coming king. And yet on the third day, 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 on the third day. Oh! They went, oh no, what have we done? And he took the keys of death, hell and the grave. Oh, <laughs> it's the sacrifice of the cross. Jesus releases us from fear and death. At the cross, Jesus overcame the world. Jesus said in John 16, 33, Jesus said, I am the world. Jesus said, I am in the world. You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. New, is what the Amplified puts it. I have deprived it of power to harm you, for I have conquered it for you. I just love it how the Amplified puts it. He is deprived of, of power. <sighs> He's took the power. That's why I say his teeth got pulled at Calvary. Somebody with no teeth can't hurt you when they bite you. All you do is get gummed. I want to tell you, you may feel like it, those teeth are sinking in, but take a look, the teeth have been pulled. Why? Because he disarmed it of power. At the cross, Jesus overcame the world. The world there refuses the social order, the way in which the world system operates. But at the cross, Jesus conquered the anti-God world system. The Bible says we're in the world, but we're not, in, not of it. To the love of the world system is to be compatible with the love of the Father. I don't know, you know, I, I've been married for over 30 years. I'm in love with my wife. And if I'd started to love another, then that would be adultery. How can you say you love him and then love the world? You see, we're in it, but we're in the world, but we're not of it. You see, it's like our apostle said on, in the, in, on a Tuesday night. We have to be different. We have to stand out. That's what it means to be a holy people. And at the cross, he paid the price so that we can be a holy people. A people that are totally and utterly sold out for him. Yeah.